Good morning, folks, and welcome to this service of worship this morning. Welcome into the presence of God, and welcome to the presence of each other as we worship together. For those who are joining us on Facebook and through other media, welcome to you as well. It's great for you to join us in this way. There's a liturgy which we could have up, thank you. So let's join together in this. When people were lost and disheartened with life, Jesus came to bring new life. Praise God for the many gifts God brings. Did I hear you saying that? Did I, I didn't think so. It's up there? I thought it must be because it's up there. So let's, we'll start that again, shall we? Let's and then you can join in. When people were lost and disheartened with life, Jesus came to bring new life. Praise God for the many gifts God brings. When we cry out in need, God listens to us and responds. May we respond by giving our gifts and by giving thanks. Let us worship God. When people were lost and disheartened with life, Jesus came to bring new life. Praise God for the many gifts God brings. When we cry out in need, God listens to us and responds. May we respond by giving our gifts and giving thanks. Let us worship God. As Jesus emptied himself to be one with you, O God, we too seek such a deep, still point in our souls. May we learn to let ourselves, to see ourselves as you saw us when you created us in your image. May this worship remind us of who we are and what you call us to be as we celebrate and give thanks. May we offer back to you the gifts we have been giving. We pray that you will show us new opportunities and new to give this day. Amen. Let's stand and greet. Hello. Let's join together in the worship in song.
presence of God and offer praise and particularly after a song like that where we have heard of God's utter faithfulness to us we are reminded again of our unfaithfulness to him so let us confess our sins would you be seated please Just take a moment of silence while you consider what you have to offer to God in sin today. And if 
you would make the responses that are on the screen. Oh God, sometimes we wonder if you are with us or not. Yet we seldom ask ourselves if we are with you. We often wonder what more you can do for us, but neglect to ask what more you do for you and your people. When we challenge others more than challenging our own assumptions, motives and attitudes, forgive us, O oh God, and challenge of us to give thanks for the many gifts we share. May we see others the way you see them, O oh God. Help us to trust others as we live in community. For you, O oh God, do amazing and wonderful things. May we know that you are with us. May we know that you, O oh God, are building our faith and our commitment. So our hearts free, we are open now to listen to the word of God. The sentence for today, it is God who is at work in you, enabling you both to will and to work for God's good pleasure. Holy God, let's say together, Holy God, you invite us to share our gifts with one another and the world. We give you thanks for all that you have given us. May this community of faith be a place where your new life and presence is found. Open our hearts, O oh God, and renew our wonder. Amen. And so we come to the reading. After this, the Lord appointed 72 others and sent them two by two ahead of him to every town and place where he was about to go. He told them, The harvest is plentiful, but the workers are few. Ask the Lord of the harvest, therefore, to send out workers into his harvest field. Go, I am sending you out like lambs among wolves. Do not take a purse or bag or sandals, and do not greet anyone on the road. When you enter a house, first say, Peace to this house. If a man of peace is there, your peace will rest on him. If not, it will return to you. Stay in that house, eating and drinking whatever they give you. For the workers deserve his wages. Do not move around from house to house. When you enter a town and are welcomed, eat what is set before you. Heal the sick who are there and tell them, The kingdom of God is near you. Verse 16 to 20. He will listen to you. He who listens to you listens to me. He who rejects you rejects me. But he who rejects me rejects him who sent me. The 72 returned with joy and said, The Lord, even the demons submitted to us in your name. He replied, I saw Satan fall like lightning from heaven. I have given you authority to trample on snakes and scorpions and to overcome all the power of the enemy. Nothing will harm you. However, do not rejoice that the spirits submit to you, but rejoice that your names are written in heaven. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks. 
Let's just pray for the preacher as she comes. Gracious God, we are about to open your word and hear what you have to say to us. Grant a speaker, and there are a number of speakers today, speakers and hearers alike, that hearing your word we may understand, and understanding obey to the glory of your name. Amen. Koto family, lovely to be with you this morning. As the Father sent me, so I'm now sending you, Jesus said, and he breathed on them the Holy Spirit. That's been the theme of our service for the last month. As the Father sent me, so I'm sending you. And today, this is our giving and thanksgiving Sunday. A school teacher once said to one of her pupils, what are you drawing there, Susan? Susan said, I'm drawing a picture of Jesus. The teacher replied, but no one knows what Jesus looks like. Yes, I know, she said, quite impatiently, but they will know when I'm finished my picture. As the Father sent me, so I'm sending you, Jesus said, go and tell the people who I am and what I am like. But do it in words and also in actions. In other words, paint a picture so people can see who I am. As the Father sent me, so I'm sending you. In chapters 9 and 10 of Luke, which Trish just read for us, we see the disciples just doing that. They went out. In some cases, they went out in two by two. And they spoke about Jesus and they spoke about the kingdom of God. And they showed the kingdom what it was like, what God was like, in the way that they um, acted. Sometimes they heal the sick. Other ways they did things, uh, caring ways in which God led them, to show them a picture of who he was. Last week we talked about offering to Jesus a tithe of our time, of our talents and our treasures. And we remember from that 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 10% is but a symbol of all that we have that belongs to him. And the adventure that Jesus invites us on, uh, which involves trust and risk. And today we have the opportunity to respond to that invitation, and we'll do that in a few moments. But the sermon slot today is going to be a little bit different from what, you're normally, what we normally do, because we're actually going to look at and celebrate with those who've actually picked up this call to go as the Father has sent me, and to show what that's like in word and action, painting pictures for people in our community to see. It will take the form of a, of a brief interview, and I will share what people have written, and uh, those um, what they've written will be available for you to, as you leave today, so you can read it in full, um, and then I'll ask them that question, what are their greatest joys and challenges, and which I invite us all to pray for them and uh, these ministries they are doing on our behalf and some of you may have a sense of that maybe God calling you to be involved in some of this and so you can follow up with that. So what we're going to do now then is just going to look at our first area of ministry and this was meeting our neighbours by visiting door to door. And so I'm just going to ask Roz and Diana if they would come forward because uh, Verghese, uh, Diana and Roz have been involved in this ministry of door to door. So I wonder if you would just come up and uh, so we can just listen to your area. If you would just stand here with me and I will read what you have written, Diana, and also um, Roz and then we'll invite others to come and join you and pray with you. It's, you think it's quite a scary thing to do, isn't it? Go in knocking on doors, you know, with this, who's behind the door, when there's dogs out there to meet you, which is always my challenge in doing door to door. Now, this is a ministry which Vergeese and also Dana and uh, Roz, Vergeese is not with us this morning, but I asked the question, what is it that you are hoping to achieve under God? And I'm going to read what they've said to kind of, because we've got three groups of people and we're going to pray for them. So just in terms of trying to hold on to the time here, I'm just going to read what, what, what each person has written. 
So I said to Diana, what is it that you are hoping to achieve under God? And this is what Diana wrote. I became involved in the door-to-door ministry when Vergeese invited me to come with him to the houses in Kinross Street and ask the people we met at, um, there to come to a gathering at Cots to meet their neighbours. And Diana said she was pleasantly surprised at the reception we received. The people were friendly and eager to chat. Vergeese was keen to revisit a few weeks later, and on that second visit, I noticed a Chinese woman who didn't appear to have much English, and so she took Simon along with her, uh, our Mandarin-speaking um, church member, and they invited her to a, tea, a Kiwi conversation class, which is held here through Donna's ministry on a Thursday morning. So she accepted the invitation, and she's been coming each week and enjoying it. They also met a dad with two boys who seemed interested in attending the holiday program. And so um, the mother was keen to sign up for that. And so what Diana is hoping to achieve in this ministry is to find out the needs of the people in this community and see if we can meet those needs at COTS. And so I just want to say to Diana, in the light of what she's written, what is your greatest joy and what is your greatest challenge? Because i inviting us all to support them in prayer. Greatest joy. I think the greatest joy is finding people who are friendly and welcoming. Um, or, you know, you feel a little bit apprehensive when you're going and knocking on doors of people you don't know, but we, we had all together a very um, welcoming, receptive response from the people that we went to. Um, the, ch- the biggest challenge, I think, is to see the size of Blockhouse Bay and the many streets that still need to be visited. And, and so we, we can take a long time, but maybe there will be some people who can come and help us. That's wonderful. Thank you very much. Now, um, I asked Roz if she would write, uh, what, are we, what are you hoping to achieve? And this is what Roz said, um, that we cots get to know our neighbours by visiting local households as led by God, that people and families in our community will receive a personal invitation to come along to one of the many programs that the church has to offer on various days of the week and according to their needs. So I said to Roz, what is it you've learned on your journey so far? And this is what she said, that most people we visited have been receptive, friendly, and interested in what COTS is offering in the community. They have brochures which they give out as they go, and that's got a welcome to COTS on it. It's informative. It talks about the various ministries we have, particularly the family ministries of children and and the holiday program and and so on, and meeting people that don't speak English very well and inviting them to some of the things we're doing in that area as well. So I just wanted to say to you, Roz, what's your greatest joy and what's your greatest challenge? My greatest joy was when Vergeese and Diana started to visit people in the community. <clears throat> and the reason behind that is that a few years ago, I had a word which I felt that God was saying that he was at work in this community here in Blockhouse Bay. But um, I really didn't understand that what that meant. And then when Vergeese and Diana went out, I thought, wow, this is what God's intending to do. He's actually going out um, to actually meet the people, to invite them to come along to be part of his church here in Blockhouse Bay. Um, now, uh, so um, what have I got here? <laughs> uh, finding, like, so uh, my greatest joy is finding out who our neighbours are, praying for them, visiting them, introducing ourselves to them, taking the love of God to them, inviting them to cots, learning about them and taking an interest in them, learning that they are, they are and us are no longer strangers. Um, so I think that's quite important because our neighbours can be strangers. And once you go and knock on somebody's door and say, hello, I'm Roz and I'm here from the church, and um, you know, they, they start to take an interest in you and you take an interest in them, you're no longer strangers, you know? So I think it's, it's something quite um, powerful in that. And also the invitations, so learning, 
that um, Jesus invites us, so we are to invite others. I think that's quite important, the invitation to come along. People won't come into the church, I don't think, unless they're invited to come. So I think we'd, it's really nice for us, especially like there are new immigrants in the area and things like that. They don't know what goes on here inside these doors. So it's like letting them know what happens out there. And um, being led by God, learning all I need is God and a friendly smile. So that's all you need. Um, and that COTS is being prepared to receive new people, our neighbours. Greatest challenge. Oh, greatest challenge. Could you hold that? Yes. <laughs> I think my greatest challenge is um, remembering that it's God's work, like it's, not to, it's really nothing to do with us, that actually God's at work out there and he's at work in us. Um, he's at work in the lives of people and preparing the way for us to go out and meet these people that he's choosing to bring to the church. So I just need to be willing, obedient and listening to God's guidance and there are many people out there for us to visit door to door, street by street, inviting cops to catch the vision and be inspired to join God's work in the community. Thank you very much. Uh, Vergis is not here, but he, when he was visiting, he came across a couple of people who were resistant and didn't want to have anything to do with it, with him or, or, the, or the group. And uh, he's quite keen to go back and to meet with those people again to find out exactly what, what may have happened in their past. It could be just no, but there could be some hurts there that, that he wanted to pursue. So um, I think these guys are amazing, don't you? Let's give them a great clap, shall we? <laughs> And so because of the importance and the courage and whatever that they're expressing, I'm going to ask you to stand and I'm going to ask Lynn and, um, and Steve um, to come. Uh, both of these guys are in our prayer ministry and um, Lynn leads that for us. So we're just going to ask them to pray. Can you stand? Because I think it's an acknowledgement of what they're doing. God's arm's not that far. Father, we ask for you to bless them by filling them with your spirit. Father, I ask that as they go out and meet people, that you would make them wise as serpents, knowing the timing is right, and as gentle as doves. And I ask that you would lead them particularly to the people whose hearts are already responsive and who know that you, Lord Jesus, are the one who has the words of eternal life. Thank you, God, for their courage and their sensitivity to you in doing this visiting. Thank you for their willingness for you to use their personalities and strengths. May they know the blessing of your pleasure, the pleasure you receive from being with them as they do this. Please protect them, um, their health, protect their ability to walk from door to door, protect them from potential deterrents like aggressive dogs or aggressive people. I pray that you'd give them wisdom to know how to cope when they encounter this. May you keep their, um, sustain their courage and their sensitivity to you. Thank you for Roz, Diana and for Geese. Amen. Would you please be seated? Um, I, I just wanted to just, um, I, I talked to my husband. He said, oh, I could never do that. And I said, um, look, all we're doing really is knocking on the door. Would you mind holding me? Um, this beautiful brochure that Don has put together for us, all we're doing is knocking on the door and saying, I'm Roz and this is Diana, and we're from the church up on the corner. You know, here's the photo, and I point that out. And then I say to the people, we're we just getting to know our neighbours. We're out here just saying hello, and we're just going to hand you this brochure to let you know what goes on in the church up there and to let you know that you're welcome 
and we're inviting you to come along. Now, you know, that's all you've got to do. And sometimes um, people think, oh, what will I say? Will they ask awkward questions or something like that? If they ask awkward question, I would say, oh, that's a great question. I'll get back to you next week. Can I come back with you? Because, you know, we can't have all the answers. We don't know what it is. But most in general, people have been really happy. We've picked up on, you know, if there's children, we can hear children in the background. We point out um, the programs. You know, this church has got such a wonderful program. There's mainly music for children. There's Messy Church. There's um, the Cots Youth. And then for older people, we've got the seniors at the bay, we've got men's breakfast, um, and we've got crafting, we've got the alpha course, school holiday program, and, and the English, you know, for people to, that don't have very good English to come along and have practice their English. So God's already prepared this church. This is already in place. All we need now is for the people to come along. So, and it's so simple. It's really just handing out the brochure and just saying hello. So, you know, if you feel you could do that, we do after church on a Sunday, if it's fine like today, we do half an hour, and you can visit about 10 houses in that time. So if you've got legs and you can walk, that's all you have to do. Please come along, and we, if we get enough people, we can organise it properly, you know, like give you a street to do or something like that. And join up with somebody, you know, go in two, one, two at a time, I think, actually is, is quite nice. We can be praying for each other. One can knock on the door and the other can pray. So, sorry for the time. The time. <laughs> Bless you. She's keen, isn't she? <laughs> Thank you so much, both of you. We're very encouraged. Thank you very much. If you could sit down, I'll just ask now Rod Watts and, um, and also uh, Mainly Music, uh, Catherine Cookenden, if you'd come forward. Now, just as they come forward, some of you may or may not know that Rod is the executive officer of the Northern Presbytery. Um, he works with the Presbyterian Church. And uh, so through doing City to City, uh, we have a couple of colleagues from the Presbyterian Church, and this man is a very important man. So aren't we lucky to have him in our congregation? Rod does, is the executive officer said, now Rod has written this, um, and I'm right, right, reading it for him. The Presbytery closed a church located in Dominion Road in Mount Roscoe. And what to do in its place was the question, should they sell the property? Should they start something else? And at this time, the Presbyterian Support Northern uh, presented a proposal to the Presbytery uh, to not sell, but to undertake a partnership initiative to establish a centre for the community. And the PSN would focus on delivering community-led social support, uh, primarily around food. The Presbytery would focus on establishing a mission-focused community, worshipping community. As part of their strategy to reverse the trend of decline, we agreed. A PSN employed a full-time community hub coordinator and we employed a full-time minister whose role was to plant a congregation. Presbytery refurbished the manse, removed some dilapidated buildings, refreshed the old church hall, and relocated a refurbished uh, church building that now includes a worship space and a commercial kitchen. Over the last two and a half years, through continued efforts to engage with the community, PSN has established a community garden, children's play areas, a range of food delivery options. This has included many volunteers joining in to assist. Uh, the minister, on the other hand, has established a regular worshipping congregation of 30 to 40, kids ministry, prayer groups, um, beginnings of a men's ministry, lawn mowing outreach service, involved in two primary schools, breakfasts and reading ministry, and most recently starting mainly music. So that what a great thing to do. In some places, sometimes the churches will sell land, but what these guys have done is kind of gone back into an area and they're going back and done ministry there again. So um, this is just great. So they're on their way to establishing jointly as a partner a viable mission-focused worshipping community alongside the provision of services for those who are vulnerable. And I think this is just a great thing that they are doing. But I'm just going to ask Rod, first of all, greatest joy and greatest challenge in your work? Um, 
Yeah, about three and a half years ago, the Presbytery closed a church in Mount Roscoe. Imagine 14 people sitting around a big table as a board, men and women, ministers, elders, and I was pitching a proposal to not sell and get $3.3 million, but to plant something quite new, innovative, as part of the strategy of growing the kingdom. Um, and I was going to be responsible for it if they said yes. So they were courageous enough uh, and felt that it was such a good idea, they said yes, um, with a very high level business case, not a lot of detail. And um, we spent $1.3 million in capital works, probably about two thirds more than what we thought we would. But the great joy was that that seed is growing. Um, and the joy is tinged with a lot of relief um, and uh, it takes courage, not but one person but for many people, to maintain commitment. And the other joy is that another shoot that we've just started is mainly music. And what a coincidence that Catherine is doing that. Um, the challenge is uh, working with another organisation in working out details that we hadn't envisaged and there's been a few bumps uh, along the road but we felt that um, if we stay strong with a commitment that we share uh, and the level of trust between us we'll work through anything and that's been the case thank you thank you very much thank you now this is as i said this is where um, our catherine comes in because catherine um, runs mainly music here uh, but she's now involved in this project. But I'll write, I'll just read what Catherine has said. Mainly music exists to create joy-filled communities of belonging where Jesus can be revealed. And that's what we try to do at Mainly Music here at Church of the Saviour. And for Catherine also, she's now working at this ministry called the Storehouse in Mount Roskill in South, where she's employed by Mainly Music uh, to run a session similar to what she does here on a Tuesday. Now, what Catherine has written here is, here at Cots, Mainly Music runs every Tuesday morning during the, their school term. It involves half an hour of music, movement, fun to fives. The children are brought to the session by their parents, their grandparents, or their caregivers. And there's three equally important parts to it. First is the session with always trying to provide a fun session for the children. The songs, there's rhymes to help them learn important things like counting opposites, physical coordination, um, concepts such as rhythm and tempo. And secondly, we pray, and there's a team, there's a group of people that pray together before the session starts. And thirdly, they have morning tea, and this is when you get to know the adults uh, who bring the children. And through these conversations, relationships have grown and allowed us to talk about faith and to offer to pray for them as a family. So these three things that Catherine and her team, and I'm going to ask the team to come up uh, in a few moments because there's others of you here that are involved in that. Um, that's what they do here every week. Um, I've been, I often go down to pray with the team and then go back for the morning tea and there was one little child who used to call it bubble music. She used to come because of bubble music and so love it. So it's such a great ministry that these guys do. So this is really essentially what Catherine's doing now with this church plant. Isn't it wonderful that we're working together with them? The new Storehouse Mainly Music Group has set up to support the Storehouse Missional Community's aim of reaching out to Roskill South. In time, it is hoped that the community will be able to take over the running of the Mainly Music session. So in a sense, Catherine's a real um, pioneer, uh, working out there on our behalf, doing exactly what as the Father sent me, so I'm sending you. Catherine, joy and challenge. Um, my greatest joy with Mainly Music is uh, that time when you pick a child's favorite song and you get out the parachute and the feathers and the little kids start squealing with delight, big smile on their face, legs start kicking, they are just so excited to be doing the song that you've chosen. It's those moments that um, yeah, it just really makes it worthwhile. The parents, it gives them a special memory. 
Um, the other joy is um, just getting to know the families, um, just being able to spend time with them and to hear what's happening and to kind of be a part of their life for um, oh, however long, however many months or years that they're with us. Um, the greatest challenge is uh, uh, partly with the, the changes um, in society. Uh, there's most parents, both parents are having to work. So whereas once we used to have lots of mums at Mainly Music, it's now parents, it's uh, now more grandparents and caregivers bringing kids. So kind of reaching the, their parents is, is quite hard. Uh, and also getting the word out there because um, new people who have come to New Zealand, they haven't grown up knowing about Mainly Music, so they're not necessarily aware that we're there. Um, so I think those are our, our biggest challenges. Thank you very much. Now, I did ask, uh, Ross is not here today. Uh, oh, you are? Yes. Uh, if Ross and Trish would come and pray uh, for the ministries, these outreach ministries, would you mind standing as well? Thanks very much. And, and I'm actually honoured to say that Trish, it was Trish that launched Mainly Music here uh, a generation ago. <laughs> Father God, we, we give thanks for the mainly ministry, mainly music ministry that both here and in Mount Ross School, Lord. And we just pray that, that it reaches into the hearts of families in all of those areas and that, that the young people that walk through the door will get a sense of your presence, Lord, as they jump for joy and sing songs and play with other kids, that they will know and share your love. And, and, the, and the things that they do, and also that the parents will, and the grandparents and other caregivers will know the love and care that comes with the ministry. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. And Lord, we pray for Catherine and the team and the work that they do, and we pray for uh, the more people to come to the, to the ministry, Lord, and we just pray for the children and the growing and the joy and fun that they all have together. Please bless Catherine and the team and the important work that they do, Lord. In Jesus' name, amen. Thank you very much. Uh, would you please be seated? I didn't realise when uh, I um, asked Trish to come that she had actually brought it, started here in the first place. It's amazing, isn't it? Um, and, um, and so... Um, Trish and Roz are part of that team, and we also have uh, Uma, uh, who's not here today. She and Naluka uh, are part of that ministry as well. And um, it, so it's just... Um... And Preeti has been coming as well. Wonderful, wonderful. Uh, so I, I should have called you guys up as well. So we, we, we bless you for your ministry with Catherine and the support that's there. Our last uh, area that we're going to look at this morning is that of mainly, mu uh, mainly music, um, our holiday program, which is coming up. Uh, we, and Claire and Dupree uh, are going to say something, but there's a, a, quite a large team from this congregation uh, that are part of that. Um, Troy and Timothy are part of that. There's others here this morning. So I'll get you all to come up in a few minutes and we'll pray because the holiday program is just about to start. But I asked Claire also if she'd write down what her uh, thoughts were, and she said, my hope for the holiday program, oh, no, oh, yes, that's right, my hope for the holiday program is for it to be a program that parents confidently send their children uh, to knowing they'll be safe, have a great time, and come home singing the songs, learning memory verses, eating together, making new friends, telling the stories, and exploring faith through m music, um, story, discussion and creativity. For the leaders, this is um, Claire's hope, I also hope that they have a great time, but that isn't their first priority. It is always the children. A joy is si the joy is seeing the team working together for the benefit of others and an opportunity to share their faith in small groups, expressing an upfront, getting as excited as the kids to learn memory verses um, for the prizes, and being as competitive as the kids for the games and other opportunities to work as teams. So I've asked both Claire and um, 
Dupree, who's been a part of the leadership team in this for some time, if they will share their greatest joy and challenge. So who shall I go first? All right, greatest joy. Um, my greatest joy is um, the kids and the leaders. And the, the leaders? Yeah. And the challenge is the kids when they don't listen. Yeah. <laughs> okay, so my greatest joy is holiday program is... I love the creative side of it, of creating an atmosphere, of um, seeing the teams work together, not just the leaders, but also the kids in their teams. They get very competitive. Uh, we good prizes for the winning team. Um, but, but also the uh, adults who are around, everyone working together for one purpose, which is to um, tell the stories, to share faith, um, to have a safe and fun place to be. Um, I've written down, we did a brain dump in a trainer's, leader's training a little while ago, and I asked the leaders, what is holiday program? And they said, active, inclusive, team building, chaos, fun, prayerful, competitive, creative, welcoming, belonging, enjoyable, entertaining, safe, new friends, and interesting. But the ones they chose were, holiday program is entertaining, safe, and God-focused. So one of the difficulties we have is, one of the main ones probably, is we have about 10 to 15 schools worth of kids represented here. So they, a lot of them don't know each other, so it's really hard for some of them to come in on that first day, but they get the hang of it by the second. Um, so my prayer is they also bring in a lot of bugs. It is a winter term. So my prayer is for health. Um, so for the leaders, for the kids, and for myself. That would be my greatest difficulty and challenge. I think it's clear. One of the things um, noticing, as Claire said, when you when the on the first day the littleies come in, they're quite shy. The next morning they're running in without their parents, <laughs> racing through the door. They can't wait to get in here, and it's so lovely to see it. And so it's such a great work that these guys do. So could I have the rest of the team come, if you would, because we've got a holiday program coming up. The rest of the team that are involved in this ministry, Troy and Timothy, would you mind coming up? And um, who else do we uh, do we have? Naomi and Zara, you're part of that. And, uh, and anyone else that's involved, Catherine, could you please stand? And we want to honour this ministry as well. Um, would you please stand as we pray? And I've asked you, Joy and Ivy, if they would come and pray for this ministry. Father God, what an amazing ministry here. Thank you for this ministry, O oh Lord. That this is the ministry which creates holy day for these young children, O oh Father. The holiness that you offer to these young children, O oh Lord. We pray that may this, these programs, these holiday programs, continue to flourish in our church, O oh Father. And the children who come may their hearts be touched by your word, O oh Father. And the work this team is doing, may the work that the seed they are sowing turn into amazing trees and flowers and plants that go out and spread your love, O oh Lord. I pray for each one of people who are present in this group, O oh Father. I pray for your blessing upon them. And I pray that as the holiday program comes, may you keep them safe, may you keep them protected, O oh Lord. And may joy fill their hearts, O oh Father. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Father, I just pray that uh, you will be with each leader and children during this holiday program. And Father, I pray for all the preparation that go into it, that everything will be done accordingly and at the right time. Father, I pray for all the children that walk into this door. May they be touched by your spirit. I pray for the parents that come into this door that they may know you. And Father, I pray for your protection and your love and compassion on each one of the children and leaders and organizers in this place during this holiday program, Father. Pray this in Jesus' name. 
Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, can I invite you please to just remain standing um, as we... I wanted today to do just something a little bit different in our sermon. I know it's a sermon with a difference. Uh, but I thought we've been looking over this month as the Father sent me, so I'm sending you. And just reminding you today of the picture that little girl said, I'm drawing a picture so people can see Jesus. This is the way people see Jesus. By the way we, by the things, by the words we say, and by the way we live, and by the kindnesses we offer as the Holy Spirit leads us and guides us. And I think you'd have to agree with me that three, these three areas of ministry, there's lots of them, but these are just three that highlight an obedience to that. Would you agree? They're doing that there on our behalf, but they're inviting us to join them so we can join them at any point. But in our service of celebration and thanksgiving, we wanted at this point then to say, in the light of their offering of our time, talents and treasures, that we would make at this point together uh, a call to commitment. So if we could just reflect for a few moments on what has taken place. We thank you for the ministry visiting door to door. We thank you for Roz and for Diana and Vagese. We thank you for Rod and for Catherine and the work that they're doing. We thank you for the work that has been done that is being done through Claire and, and um, Dupree and the rest of the team. But Lord, we, you call us, you call us to give a time of our time, talents and treasures to the glory and honor of your name. You don't leave us alone without your spirit. So we're having just a prayer, a, a call to commitment. I invite you to make the responses. Let's think about the words as they are said. Creator God, you nurture us with the abundance of your creation. You have blessed us with talents and gifts that enable us to rejoice in life. Your wisdom and your spirit also fulfill our deepest longings. For all these, we are truly grateful, O oh God. And out of gratitude, we offer what we have already given, but you have already given us in full. May our offerings, as well as our heart and soul, Express your loving kindness in the ministry of this church. O God of the highest heavens, O Christ of the deep earth, O Spirit of the flowing waters, O Trinity of love, you have offered your love to us. You have been faithful to your people through the ages. You have sustained in love the earth, the sea, and the sky around us. You have identified with the powerless and the weak of the world. We commit our talents, our gifts, and our money to you. Amen. And so as uh, we have we come to communion now, as we take up the offertory, I invite you to bring to place in there those cards that we invited you to bring back on a commitment of your time, talents and treasures. And this is our opportunity today to say, here we are, Lord. As I said to you a couple of weeks back when Peter's youth group were meeting, they got a great big plate and they put it in the center for a service. We won't do that, but I just invite you to think of yourself as standing in that great big plate with everybody else saying, here we are, Lord. We acknowledge all that you have given us and we give back to you this day. And so let's sing now our offertory song. Nice. 
So we come now to the great thanksgiving, and I invite you to make the responses. Let's think about the words as we say them. God is here. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to God. For God, you love us with your abundant love. You created the universe, you made covenants with your people, and you heard the cries of your people. You sent Jesus to live our life, bringing healing and new life to the world. Through his death and resurrection, he demonstrated the immense power of your love. Through his death and resurrection, he demonstrated again the, the power of your love. Your love is more than we can imagine. It is always present. It never ends. And we are blessed because of it. On this great day of celebration and thanksgiving, we recall Jesus' instruction to remember him by sharing bread and wine. We recall, too, how he appeared to the disciples after the resurrection. And they recognized him when he had broken the bread. Jesus took the bread... He gave you thanks. He broke it, offering it to his friends with these words. Take, eat. This is my body which is given for you. Do this to remember me. After supper, he took the cup. He blessed it. Drink from this, all you. This is my blood of the new covenant, poured out for you and for all for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it to remember me. And so we remember all of your gifts to your people, especially that proclaimed in the life, death, and resurrection of Jesus. Send your Holy Spirit upon us who have gathered here to remember and to celebrate and upon these gifts. As we share in this feast, may this bread and this wine empower us to embody your love for all people. Praise, glory, and love be yours. This end every day from us and all people, here and everywhere. Amen. I invite you to sit or to kneel as we pray together the Lord's Prayer, and I invite you to pray that in the language of your birth. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come. Your will be done on earth as in heaven. Today, our daily bread, forgive us our sins. Do not bring us to the test, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. A very warm invitation for anyone who's visiting us today to come to receive the sacrament of the bread and wine. Uh, if you would like a blessing instead, if you could just place your hand by your side so I know you're not asking for the sacrament. If you would like prayer for yourself or for anyone else, if you just place your hand on your heart as you come and you kneel at the altar rail and there'll be others who will be there to pray with you. So come, God's people. Above all powers, above all kings, above all nature and all created things, above all wisdom and all the ways of man, you were here before the world began. 
forgiven because you were forsaken. I'm accepted, you were condemned. I'm alive and well, your spirit is within me because you died and rose again. Rejected and alone like a rose Trampled on the ground You took the fall And thought of me Above all kingdoms Above all thrones Above all wonders the world has ever known Above all wealth and treasures of the earth There's no way to measure what you're worth Amazing love, how can it be That you, my king, would die for me Amazing
Could I invite you please to stand? Our prayer after Holy Communion, we pray together. Most gracious God, source of all blessing, we give you thanks for inviting us to share this meal as your family. Strengthen us to be a blessing to one another and a blessing to all the world. May this time together bring new life, commitment, and now. So the peace of God which passes all understanding, keep your hearts and your minds in the knowledge and love of God and of his Son, Jesus Christ our Lord, the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, 
the Holy Spirit be amongst you and remain with you always. Amen. Would you please be seated? From one kind of celebration to another, are there any birthdays or other reasonable occasions to rejoice, anniversaries, anything at all? I have chocolates here. No enticements? Fine. It, uh, if it's silent, let's still rejoice in our hearts for all that God has done in our midst. I was deeply grateful for his presence with us in what could have been an extremely difficult meeting but turned out to be a very nice one that flowed yesterday. So there are a lot of reasons to be uh, grateful for what God is doing in our midst. Notices are as follows. Holiday program registrations are open on Monday. Stella is the name, Shine Jesus Light. It's one week away. So please make sure that you get uh, registrations done. Claire has cutting at the back to take home and bring back next week. Things that will enable the program to uh, run smoothly. We have a spring social event downstairs in the main hall. Uh, please join us at around about 12 noon so we can have a quick cup of tea, zip downstairs, and there's a lot of food, good stuff to be down there, except for one item, and that is a um, pizza that I put in the oven on this morning, and it didn't come out right. So if it looks... <laughs> If it looks strange, uh, you'll know why. What have I missed up? Oh, and the table tennis, of course. That will be played as well at the same time. So strange pizza, along with some very good food, plus table tennis uh, for us to play, uh, to, to uh, join together in uh, later on. And finally, if for any reason you forgot to bring back your giving packs from next week, from last week, Please just bring them next week and put them in the offering bag as it goes round. And therefore, we come to our last song in which we give thanks to God, give thanks to the Lord for his love endures forever. Let's stand. Give thanks to the Lord, our God and King, his love endures forever. For he is good, he is above all things, his it love endures forever. Sing praise, sing praise. Come on now, and now straight on, his love endures forever. All the life has been before, his love
Amen. God has blessed us with abundance of life. Go and offer God's abundant gifts. Amen. Amen. We go in the name of Christ. Amen. Everything I need and so much more So I just want to live my